Hey guys, thanks for coming to check out this new video. Um, firstly, I just wanted to say a big thank you for all the beautiful compliments I've been getting on the last two videos I did, the Jamaica um, bullet journal setups. Really, really appreciate your feedback from the old subscribers and my new subscribers. Um, thank you so much for supporting me. It means a real lot. Um, and anyway, moving on to what today's video is, um, I'm still really feeling the Jamaica vibes and just loving it and I'm feeling very Jamaican. So I kind of wanted to do more. So I've bought a sketchbook that actually allows me to use wet media in it. I wanted to practice some more acrylics because I haven't used them in a while. Um, so I'm going to be painting a beautiful scene from Jamaica that I wasn't able to put into my bullet journal. So I'm going to guide you through it on what I do and I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> So as I said, I got this brand new sketchbook and I was very excited to get it. Um, I haven't used a sketchbook regularly for many years. I'm going to say since I was at uni, so that's probably going on 13 years. Ugh. But yeah, so I wanted to get started and keep a record of all the drawings that I do. I do tend to do drawings and paintings on pieces of paper or canvases and they're either stored somewhere in my house or just thrown away if I wasn't completely happy with them. So I wanted to, to get something that I can keep a record and document everything that I draw, even small miniature paintings in. So I came across this one. This is the Moleskin art series, the watercolor sketchbook, and the pages are 200 GSM. So they are going to withhold a lot of water use. And if I'm wanting to practice my watercolors and my acrylics and gouache, I'd like to try that out as well. This is going to hopefully be ideal. So anyway, moving on to what I am actually drawing today. I am still in this Jamaica phase and really loving exploring Jamaica and its beautiful landscapes and things that make me think of Jamaica. The thought of riding a horse through the beautiful crystal clear water at sunset is incredible to me and I thought it would be nice to capture that in a painting. So how I created this um, particular composition, I found a photo reference of a girl riding a horse and it was in silhouette form and then I compiled that with a different shot that I found of a sunset with awesome palm trees on the right hand side and some bungalows with thatched roofs. Um, it really said Jamaica to me. I start with a simple grid that's usually just just a four quadrant across the image and then I'll create that same template on my Photoshop image. So I drew a line straight down the middle vertically and horizontally, did the same on my page. So now that I know I've got the exact area to work with and it helps with the proportions and I'm still just using my eye within each portion. It's just, it's just a nice little guide to help you get things right first time. Then once I map in my horizon line, I've got a good basis to start with and I can start sketching in where the areas are, the sea, the land and the sky, and then I can get painting. Immediately what I noticed about this paper is it's so different from a canvas. It behaves really differently. I had to use a lot of paint and a lot of water to get it to spread and to go into the teeth of the paper. So the texture of the paper is kind of rough um, and you've got a lot of yeah, indents in it that I wanted to try and fill with paint and every time I put some on it would kind of soak it up and absorb it and so I'd have to put another layer. So I do a lot of layers on this page to get the right depth of colour and to not see the paper come through the paints. I didn't want them too transparent. Um, so yeah, I'm just starting in the sky with the blues and trying to get as much of an even gradient that I can, starting from that sort of richer blue on the right hand side and adding white to get lighter as we go to the left. Now I'm adding in some clouds and it was very ex experimental I'd say to try and get the right colours for these clouds. Normally you would think white clouds, but because of the sunset, they've got intense shadows on them. So they're almost like a, a grayish purple color. So I tried to mix the best look just based on adding what I think needed to go in there to get the right color. And then it was just about building different layers on top of each other to get those highlights and little shadows here and there and reflection, reflections from the yellowness of the sun. So it did take a lot to get that kind of look and they're definitely not perfect but it was yeah it was fun to explore actually I don't do a lot of cloud work in general so that was a bit new for me so now I'm adding in a very warm deep yellow to the base of the sky and 
It was really lucky that these clouds were positioned the way they were because it meant I didn't have to try and create a smooth gradient between this rich yellow of the sun into the depth of the blue sky because that would be really, really tricky because obviously the two blended together make green. In nature, that is not happening, so it would have looked very odd if I had to do that. So these clouds were the perfect um, thing to block out the yellow from that blue area and I could just blend my clouds over the top. I've added a lot more of the purple clouds throughout and also in the yellow areas added more of a pinky tone to it or an orangey tone to it uh, to make it look like that sun shine is reflecting on them and changing the colour of those clouds. And now to place in the very bright sun. Now this is obviously even even brighter in in the photo it's hard to get that luminance in the painting so I've just gone for pure white and I'm just trying to get it as bright as possible in that point there and softly blend it out into the yellow. Here I'm adding highlights across the clouds where that sun would be hitting the edges and giving that that little glow around them and I think that's where it starts to take a bit of shape before it was kind of looking a little bit messy but now it's sort of going ah oh, it's clouds. If anyone is interested on how long I took in this section this sky took me about an hour so we're an hour into my first session. For this part I'm just using some black mixed in with some red because this first part has got a lot of the sunshine's reflections on it making it a little bit more of a red tone and then as we progress out to the right I'm just sort of increasing the blue sh shades a little bit and it's all in silhouette form anyway so at the moment it's all pretty flat and then I'm going to build it up with a bit of highlights later on. Here I am using the side of the paintbrush to give me long sweeping strokes for all the tree trunks and I'm trying to make it look as if the palm trees are all blowing one way so little tiny scratches on the on the flat side of the brush gives you that wispiness for those palm leaves and they're all going to the right hand side um, and I think that gives it that feel that you're on a tropical island. So I've added in a few lighter tones throughout that silhouette background uh, which just gives us an idea that there's some thatched roofs there and now I'm adding in the sand bank in front of that. Um, like when you're looking at these, well when I'm looking at these paintings you don't really see the colours as individual colours yet until you start to paint and yeah it was pretty bizarre some of these colours that I decided on making to get that match to the photo is yeah really bizarre so this is like a purpley grayish sort of shade that I recognized in the beach you would never think to do that until you're actually painting and the way I choose colors I don't know if anyone else does this but I sort of close one eye <laughs> and look at my reference and just try and focus in on that color and see whether it's warm or cool and try and try and see which shades you should add to get to the right tone so yeah I'll initially see you know a, a gray or an off gray and then I'll be like should I add red to make it more of like a warm gray or do I need to add like a purple or a blue to make it a little bit cooler so I don't know why the one eye helps me do that I think it's maybe because it's you know taking away that perspective from your eyes and you're just sort of seeing flat shapes and colors so yeah let me know if I'm not alone in doing that um, but that is how I'm choosing every one of these colors in this painting how I'm trying to match to that reference photo that I've got. Now that I've got the majority of the background setting in, I've decided to sketch in the shape or the silhouette of my horse and person. So I've still got that little reference line through the centre because I didn't want to paint over that. I wouldn't know where the centre line is. And so I can see that the kind of like the base of the horse's nose goes right through that centre line. So that's how I adjust. And I'm just using my eye to scale how big the horse and the lady should be. And then once I've sketched that in, then I can go back in with the paint and start working that into the painting.
Now this water was very challenging. Uh, water is one of the hardest things I think to paint. Trying to capture every ripple and wave is yeah, tricky and sometimes very tedious. But I enjoyed doing this and it's always nice to achieve the final result anyway. Um, but yeah, so to do this I just did um, multiple colours, multiple blues and just layered them up. Tried to add white in to get some highlights and some yellow bits for the where the sun was hitting and just tried to do my best to work straight from the reference. Wherever there was a dark section, I would put a dark section in my painting and the same with the lights and just try and get as much of a likeness as I could. About here is where I started to feel disheartened. I felt that the water was not going the way I wanted it to and this section here that I'm painting felt so wrong to me. Um, I was like, what is this blue doing on the shore? But my, my brain was telling me that's the color that is in the reference. So just go for it and try it and see what happens. Um, so yeah, it just felt really odd to be doing more blue here. This is actually the shiny part that you see reflecting where the waves have lapped away from the shore. And so it definitely felt bizarre doing this blue here. But once I add in all the shines and the highlights from the sun, it does start to look more shiny rather than more of the ocean. So I'm glad I stuck with it and yeah, kept going at it in hopes that I could fix this problem that I was making. So now while that blue ocean was drying, I thought I'd, I'd paint in the silhouette of the horse and the lady and get that put in and try and see if I can save that water behind it. <laughs> Now I'm building up those layers on that shiny wet sand area and I'm starting to breathe again because I think it's going to work out. As soon as those highlights went in and some of that yellow was reflected in there, it felt like it became part of the scene. It was looking really, you know, segmented and even the darkness of that silhouette, it just wasn't working. So I'm so glad when this started to pull through and it started coming together. I'm now at about two and a half, uh, two hours and 45 minutes into this painting and you can see it coming together and I'm so happy about the shines on that sand. I was yeah, really fearful that that wasn't gonna work out and it luckily is looking much better. The highlights and the shadows did wonders for it. So now I'm just adding as much highlights and dark spots through those waves as I can to get it to separate from that wet sand and to also get it to look like water because right now it was still looking way too flat. So I was trying to give it some shape by yeah, defining some shadows and highlights. And it was really just a matter of layering and just working at it for another hour or so um, until I was happy with the depth that I was getting. Now that I'm adding some of this yellow and these strong highlights behind the horse, that's starting to make that appear part of the picture itself. It was looking a little bit flat and it needed more contrast between that and the, the water behind it. So by having this lightness there, it makes it pop out a little bit more. And yeah, it made a world of difference to just add that little glow around the body and the horse's body as well. And now the final touches around that horse of where the water's splashing beneath and the sun is hitting it, causing it to be sort of lighter in shade, a little bit brighter and white. Um, that is, I think, where it's pulled it all together. It's made them seem like they're in the same setting. So happy with how that had turned out. So I finished this piece off by writing the word Jamaica down in that bottom right corner. I'm just using the calligraphy brush pen um, to to create the shadow and map out where I'm going to write it and then go over the top of it with the white gel pen to make it pop from the page. And I'm happy with how this turned out and it kind of finalizes the piece, I think. And now it's time for the fun part of removing the washi tape from the edges. By having this washi tape here, it gives you a really clean line to work with and you don't get any mess on your pages. So let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed 
this kind of video, something a bit more relaxed and just seeing me paint or draw in the sketchbook. I'm considering making this a series uh, because I always feel that there's, there's more to show of these countries and I just thought if I did a spread based on the countries you get all that inspiration out and they won't always be finished paintings like this one they might be a little bit more um, just relaxed little sketches or something uh, let me know if that's something that you're interested in watching and if you like this video please like it um, so that I know that you're enjoying it and I will see you again in my next week's video bye